Professor Rai Rajkumar. Now on design by Professor Amaresh, please. Still good morning. Uh, this is the team. Uh, we, we started small. I was hoping that just three people can influence the design agenda for the entire IMF for the world, but we were wronged. The others joined immediately after that. So I think our aspiration got slightly curtailed, but I'm very happy. This is a very energetic team that we had, and we delivered it with a lot of passion and points. So let me share some of those points. Um, uh, before I do that, I just quickly want to also share my life's history of failures. I started at 5 o'clock in the morning thinking that I'll take one and a half hours. By 6.30, I will summarize the two days of deliberations, and then I will come here with, with well, I failed miserably. Uh, so uh, there is such richness that we have created in the last two days. It would take weeks to actually assimilate, if not longer. Um, so these are the key points. We, we first felt that uh, the fact that design is uh, essential for inclusive manufacturing is something that we need to communicate. Uh, so communication is actually a very important part of it. Uh, we tried to uh, emphasize that earlier that as you go earlier in the development phase, the importance of your decision making becomes far more, you know, far greater while you don't spend so much resources to take those decisions. And that is what empowers design as a, as a key entity in this whole game. And we need to communicate that. Now, the questions that came is what to communicate, how to communicate, and who to communicate. For example, you know, MSME would certainly be a very important stakeholder to which we would like to communicate that. Um, Daniel Stinster very emphatically, and I, that's why I'm quote, quoting it, uh, said that there is actually no difference between a car designer and a doctor. And he happens to be both, by the way. Uh, and I, I, what he meant was that there is an underlying philosophy and a methodology that cuts across disciplines, and we must make people aware of that and probably sensitize and possibly even teach. You know, so we all go through identifying problems, developing ideas, working these out, trying it out, modifying, and so on. And that would make it scalable. You know, we can move it scalability at a training level. Uh, the role of the designer uh, for inclusive manufacturing, what are the key traits? So we have been listing some. Uh, there, uh, you know, immersion came out as, as a very important one, and we need to be sensitive to the aspirations, and this has been already mentioned, that it is not about solving poverty. It's far greater than that. It is really, you know, figuring out what people want and catering to that, so aspiration plays a critical role there. And uh, second element was tools and techniques. What kind of tools and techniques we can, we can empower uh, our designing with? Um, so we need to synthesize elements to deal with complexity. That's what designers do. There are many tools that are available, but how do we adapt them for the purposes of inclusive manufacturing? That's, I think, a key, key question. Not only how do we adapt, but make, make them available and mentor in order to, to carry that out. And the importance of free and open source is, is stressed as probably a major game changer in, in carrying these out. The other key points is, of course, design process for the informal se sector. You know, how do we integrate sustainability into the design process? This is not part of a norm or curriculum in, in the courses right now. And I think that will play an important role. Uh, the thinking of the whole life cycle. And <clears throat> how do we catch the unarticulated needs? You know, many of the things that people say are not necessarily the ones that they want. Uh, and then many of the things that they want are something that they are not explicitly aware of. So how do we catch them? Uh, of course, we need to interact with and uh, consult mul multiple stakeholders. We need to also design not just the product or the process, but the business model, because it has to be sustainable. And that will require the stakeholders to be interested in actually carrying this out. Now, what should we do differently for the inf informal se sector? And many points came. I just noted it down. We need to speak in a language of the stakeholder. You know, maybe there are different media, different communication that we should look at. Puppetry was mentioned earlier in one of the presentations. Are there you know, puppet shows that we should be using in interacting with the user? You know, uh, how do we adapt tools and techniques? How do we incentivize the stakeholders? And can designing be transferred next time so that they 
those for whom we are developing the solutions don't have to come back to us for next time for developing solutions. They can be from solution receivers to solution getters. So just uh, slides on actionable items. You know, can you create networks? These are some of the points that came from our earlier discussions. From Vaj, for example, how do you build on existing achievements, influence government initiatives? These are some of the points that we already had before we started the discussion. We started with these ones. You know, we need to transfer not only the solution, but also how to solve. Education came out as a very strong theme. You know, how do you educate people to design? You know, both awareness and education. Children, grassroots innovators, and very uh, interestingly, engineers as well. You know, because they don't have design as an ingrained element of education at the moment. Uh, Hands-on experience should play a very uh, important role. And somebody suggested that can we make it compulsory that every parent should design a toy for their children or along with their children? How to use design thinking to design inclusive manufacturing program and policy? Communicate the importance. Co-design and you know, how to involve the user in the design phase. Uh, need to have a vision for the society as well as designing society. That is what we are trying to do in some sense. We are trying to change the society. So we collectively need to have a vision for what is the kind of society that we would like to have for which we are designing. Uh, and probably the last point that I want to emphasize is that you know, these are some of the elements that how do you design with local resources? You know, normally we just open these big materials chart and say, what is the best material to choose? But if you are designing for a community, we should say, right, how do you close the cycle? And therefore, what are the materials that are available? What are the people that are available? How do we design for them, with them, by them eventually? So that's the main points that came out. Is there anything I have missed? Please join, but otherwise, thank you. <laughs>